Should I do another Deadpool video? Absolutely! Deadpool's the greatest! Clearly you've never actually read a Deadpool comic. He's incredibly... Funny? Attractive? Shooty and stabby? Obnoxious. What is happening? In a video I did a few months back, we discussed why Wade Wilson, aka Deadpool, talks in yellow speech bubbles. Since then, I have gotten a ton of requests to talk about why Deadpool has had multiple voices in his head. And if you're unfamiliar with the character or the concept, there was a point when Deadpool had a pair of dueling inner monologues. One that speaks in yellow boxes and is seen as the main voice, and a second one that speaks in white boxes and is a bit more rational and condescending. This idea of Deadpool having multiple feuding voices in his head wasn't something that the character initially debuted with. It it wasn't until 2008, a whole 17 years after his first appearance, that we first saw this element pop up in Wolverine Origins number 21, written by Daniel Way, who would have his own famous run on the character. In an interview with Way, he explained his reasoning for adding these voices, saying, quote, I wanted to do Deadpool without a straight man or sidekick to bounce off of, so I simply internalized the chatter. He went on to describe the dynamic he initially intended for Deadpool's inner voices, saying, quote, the white first person narrative caption box is kind of what he's really thinking. Then there's the yellow box, which is his diary, and that's what he kind of wants you to think he's thinking. But alright, if that's the real world explanation, then what's the incontinuity reason? Some fans have speculated that Deadpool's inner voices were a result of brain damage that the Merc has suffered throughout the years, causing him to acquire a kind of dissociative identity disorder. Seems simple enough, but this is comics. Of course it's more complicated than that. In the Deadpool annual from 2013, it was revealed that the voice inside his head that takes the form of white caption boxes is actually an old Marvel villain named Madcap. Yes, Deadpool has a completely separate person inside his head. Amazing. Madcap has an incredible healing factor, just like Deadpool. He's also crazy, just like Deadpool. They're cut from the same cloth which might be a funny observation a few minutes from now. Either way, the story goes that this disfigured avocado Thank you. was contracted to kill some other blind avocado at law named Matt Murdock when Madcap showed up and distracted him. Daredevil came onto the scene to stop them both, but he didn't really have the patience to deal with healers. Luckily, Thor showed up out of nowhere and Daredevil convinced him to electrocute Deadpool and Madcap so they can quickly end the fight. Thor went a little overboard with this and accidentally disintegrated the two nuisances into a pile of ash. Moments later, Deadpool and Madcap's healing factors kicked in, but since they're both combined into one pile, the healing factor ended up merging the two of them together. Deadpool now had Madcap's mind in his own brain. And this was the status quo for a bit. Deadpool had three voices, his speaking voice, his main thoughts, and now Madcap for about four or five years until the two of them were finally separated, but we'll touch on that in a bit. The voices weren't that distinct from one another in terms of personality at first, but over time they got their own regular dis positions more in line with how the Deadpool video game described them as childish Deadpool in the yellow caption boxes, serious Deadpool in the white caption boxes, and just Deadpool as Wade's speaking voice. What I find interesting about this is how the voices seem to line up with Freud's structural model of the human psyche. You've probably already heard of the Austrian neurologist Sigmund Freud, usually followed by the generalization that everything he ever said was so fantastically wrong by today's understanding of how our minds work, but despite that, Freud has managed to infiltrate and influence modern culture with more force and tenacity than probably anyone ever. Psychologist John Kilstrom once said, quote, more than Einstein or Watson and Crick, more than Hitler or Lenin, Roosevelt or Kennedy, more than Picasso, Elliot or Stravinsky, more than the Beatles or Bob Dylan, Freud's influence on modern culture has been profound and long lasting. And yes, a lot of his ideas were next level bonkers, but there are still a few areas where he wasn't completely wrong. For the purposes of this video, I'm talking about his claim that the mind is made up of different parts. But I don't mean the physical structure of the brain consisting of distinct regions and hemispheres, but rather the parts of our personalities and their relationships with one another. Freud suggested that the mind is split into three interacting parts, and that our individual personalities were formed by the inner struggle between them. These include the id, the ego, and the superego. First up, let's talk about the id. This is your instinctual desire for instant gratification of your wants and needs. This is the part of your mind that's impulsive, emotional, Emotional. It seeks pleasure and gets aggressive when you don't get what you want right now. Young children, for example, will often throw tantrums if they don't get their way. I do the same thing with my editors. DK, what are you doing? Get this out of here. Stop it. Come on, man. I see the id as being represented by Deadpool's inner voices in the yellow caption boxes. It's immature, hedonistic, impatient, obsessed with guns, violence, and money. It's driven by the pleasure principle, which seeks to avoid pain and satisfy one's biological needs. 
like Deadpool's insatiable hunger for Mexican food. To get a better understanding of the id, it's probably best to contrast it against the second part in the Freudian Triforce, the superego. This represents the conscience, dealing with one's sense of morality. It operates based on the idealized version of oneself, and even self-criticizes if one fails to live up to those ideals. I believe Deadpool's white caption boxes constitute the superego. I know, I know, after learning about Madcap a few minutes ago, it might be difficult to think, oh, this guy is definitely a moral compass for Deadpool, but we have to remember that that story was a retcon. It wasn't initially intended for Madcap to be that voice, so we're just gonna let it slide. We're just gonna let it slide for now. You can disagree in the comments, I don't know. The dialogue of this voice usually, not always, but usually steers Deadpool to take more serious, responsible actions, even criticizing him for his shortcomings and childish, impulsive behavior. Take a look at a couple interactions between the dueling inner voices. When Deadpool's friend Bob, an ex-agent of Hydra, accidentally takes a dive with a dangerous villain named Tiger Shark, the two voices have completely different reactions. The yellow voice wants to run away from the threat of Tiger Shark as a sense of self-preservation, while the white voice says that they should really be rescuing Bob because that's the right thing to do. In another instance, Deadpool kills a bunch of people that his employer hired to help him. The white voice acts as a conscience, asking if he thinks the employer will care that Deadpool just killed a bunch of his own men, but the yellow box exclaims that it doesn't matter, they're still getting paid. Or take the beginning of the Deadpool video game. They get the script for the game and the yellow voice doesn't want to read any of it, because words. Words are boring. However, the white voice urges him to be responsible and actually read through it. It even condescends Deadpool during parts of the game when he would know what's going on if he actually took a look at the script. Heck, even the design of the white boxes takes on a more formal, structured tone. Black courier font on a plain white background. No flash, no pizzazz, just straight to business. By contrast, the other inner voice is written in your classic stylish comic book font on a fun yellow background to match Deadpool's own speaking voice. Speaking of which, the third and final part of Freud's model of behavior is the ego. The ego is the most conscious part of our minds and it's what mediates between the conflicting wants of the id and superego. The ego also deals with reality, which is fitting because it is Deadpool's real voice that we're talking about. And we've seen plenty of occasions where Deadpool uses his speaking voice to consult and strike deals with his dueling inner voices. Like when he was being made fun of by some punk kids, the yellow voice wanted to compulsively kill them but the white voice tried to talk him out of it. Deadpool then settled on a compromise with his inner voices. He wouldn't kill them, he would just break their arms. See? much more rational. The ego also understands that there are other people who have just as valid thoughts and feelings and desires. Where the id makes decisions based off of the pleasure principle and the superego makes decisions based off of morality, the ego makes decisions based off of what other people will think or the consequences of a given action. There was an entire stint in Daniel Way's Deadpool run where Wade traveled the country trying to make people see that he can be a hero. It wasn't driven by his conscience or a desire to do what's right. He still did horrible and unethical things to try and achieve this goal, like framing his friend Weasel to look like a supervillain so Deadpool could claim the glory of being a hero in the eyes of the public, who previously only saw him as a violent lunatic mercenary. And when Deadpool's not trying to look like a hero, he's simply trying to look awesome in order to impress people. While Daniel Way did not plan for Deadpool's voices to line up with the id, ego, and super ego, it's interesting to see how well they unintentionally fit. It's actually become a trope in storytelling to have a so-called Freudian trio composed of three characters based loosely off this model, one who's emotional and instinctual, another who is rational and logical, and one who tries to reconcile between them. Think Avengers or Star Trek, Lord of the Rings or Boy Meets World, the list goes on. Anywhere you can find a group of three characters, chances are they more or less fit into the Freudian trio trope. But in the case of Deadpool, he represents all three parts by himself. That is pretty cool. However, this can be a little tricky because the personalities of the voices don't stay consistent. Sometimes the white boxes are more immature and the yellow boxes are more serious. Daniel Way explained that the voices seemingly flip-flop, saying, quote, it's like he can't keep things straight. Deadpool very much lives in a world of his own construction, so he's not very big on rules and order. Oh my god, this is so boring! No, it's not. It, it's, it's really interesting. Perhaps we should let someone else chime in. I think you two have done enough of that already. Yeah, but here's an idea. Thank you, Scott, and uh, Scott's boxes. Yeah, I totally agree with Mr. Way. Deadpool definitely lives in a world of his own construction, which, I mean, that might be a little bit weird to think about, given that Daniel Way is one of the many very talented people who 
made the world that he said Deadpool constructs, but it makes sense somehow. The way we talk about fictional characters presumes that they have experiences and perceptions, even consciousness in their own worlds, though we also totally understand that those worlds are made by people in our world. I don't need to talk your ear off about this because one, you don't have a healing factor and that would be pretty gruesome, and two, you covered a lot of this with Ollie in your Avengers video, but to build on this line of thought, we can explain a lot about how Deadpool is the way he is if we accept his having experiences and consciousness. There's this line of thought from a school of philosophy called phenomenology, which holds that it's our experiences that comprise this wacky thing we call reality. At least, as far as we know, our perceptions give rise to all that's out there. Now, the thing about perceptions is that, for now at least, you need a body to have them. So in this line of thought, consciousness, perceptions, reality, they're all tied up in having and using bodies. So what if that body was different, had a completely unique and exceptionally intense experience of the world? Might it not follow that since reality is based on perceptions and perceptions depend upon a body, your reality might be different? Is this starting to sound familiar? That is what we're gonna talk about in regard to Mr. Wade Deadpool Wilson on Idea Channel, if you wanna come and check it out. After you're done here, of course, Scott and his boxes still have a lot of very important material to cover. See you soon. Thanks, Mike. And yeah, unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. And in the comics, Deadpool and Madcap were eventually separated. Deadpool took up that same contract to kill Matt Murdock again. This time, Luke Cage showed up to stop him and delivered a massive punch to Deadpool's head. The resulting damage finally allowed for Madcap's mind to fully take over Deadpool's body. But Deadpool is not a fan of having someone else control him, so he came up with a plan to separate the two of them once and for all. They convinced Luke Cage and Thor, who once again showed up out of nowhere, to play tug of war and rip Deadpool's body in half. In the aftermath, the right half of his body was solely Deadpool, and the left half healed into Madcap. The two men were their own separate selves once more, cut almost literally from the same cloth. See? It all came around. Since then, Deadpool has only had one voice in his head. If you don't count the brief period where he had a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent's consciousness transferred into his brain to seemingly fill the role as a super ego, as Madcap once did. Lame! Let's wrap this up! <gasps> Like a chimichanga. Look, okay, we're almost done, all right? What exactly was the point of all this? Remember, Freud's theory was that our personalities are shaped by the balance between the id, ego, and superego. These three voices fleshed out the character of Deadpool by explicitly showing each side of his personality, but with Madcap gone, did he take Deadpool's sense of morality with him? That depends on your particular version of the character. Deadpool has been called the internet's favorite superhero. One writer even described him as a walking, talking, chimichanga, scarfing meme, and that's a big part of his personality, sure, but it's not all of it. It's fun to take panels out of context and create our own idea of Deadpool as a wise, cracking, self-indulgent, violent, obsessed clown, but when we do so, as symbolized in the story that split apart Wade and Madcap, we risk throwing away a genuine slice of his personality and end up with a version of Deadpool who's incomplete. But I'm filming this before I saw the movie, which is you know, probably fine. What do you guys think? Do Deadpool's feuding mental voices represent the Freudian model of the human psyche? Do you wish he'd go back to having Madcap in his head or are you just fine with his regular inner voice? Let's talk about it all in the comments. And a huge thanks to Mike from Idea Channel for being a part of this video. Seriously, if you're not subscribed, you really, really should be. Click right here to see the video of his that I made an appearance in exploring what it would be like to be Deadpool. Go check it out, it is genuinely amazing. We also have an entire playlist of Deadpool videos examining topics like whether or not he might secretly be a mutant or hopefully dispelling the myth that he was a ripoff of Deathstroke, plus a bunch more. Click right here to lean back and watch all of our videos about the Merc with a mouth. And make sure you hit that big sexy subscribe button so you don't miss out on all the new videos that we make for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday that explore the history, science, art, and philosophy behind your favorite comic book superheroes.